All right, so we're going to go over E4.4, which is solving exponential and logarithmic equations. And before we get into that, I just want to refresh on some of the properties that we've learned so far. So the first thing is if we have the equations y equals log base a of x and x equals a to the y, those mean the same thing. That's just switching from log form to exponential form. Okay, um, They are inverse functions. So um, if I have it written as exponential form, a to the x, the inverse of that would be log base a of x and vice versa. So we're going to use inverses to switch um, from one form to the other. So to get rid of uh, exponential base a, we're going to use log base a. To get rid of log base a, we're going to use exponential base a. Okay. Um, the next thing I want to look at is... Um, just a refresher of some properties. So a to the x here, let's see if I have my pencil. Okay, a to the x equals a to the y. That implies that x equals y. Okay, so if we can write both sides of the equation with the same exponential base, then we can just drop the bases and set the exponents equal to each other. Okay. The same thing is true with logs. If we have log base A and log base A on both sides with the two log bases, we have just two terms, one on each side, and they have the same log base, then we can just drop the logs, and this implies that x equals y. Okay. So that's kind of the goal here is to get it to where both sides have the same exponential base or both sides have the same log base. That way we can just drop it and have something really simple to solve. Okay. Now, we don't always just have one term is equal to one term. Sometimes we have two or three terms are equal to two or three terms. So before we can just drop logs, even if they all have the same log, we have to condense it down to just one log term on each side. So remember, these are our properties for expanding and condensing. Um, if we have a multiplication inside our log, then that expands out into an addition. So log of x times y becomes log x plus log y. If we have a division on our inside value here, then that expands into a subtraction. So we're going to use these, these properties backwards. If we have two terms being subtracted, we can write that as one term by just putting the inside numbers um, on top of each other. Right? Remember, the one that's being subtracted is the one that shows up down here in the denominator. Um, same thing with the multiplication. If we have two terms being added, that's going to condense into a multiplication. Um, and then the only other thing is we can only cancel a log on both sides if it's just log of something equals log of something. right? We can't have coefficients. So remember, to get rid of a coefficient out here, we can take that coefficient and move it back up into the exponent. Okay, So we're going to use all these properties and then um, just a couple more down here at the bottom and we'll start looking at some problems. So these last two is kind of what I was talking about with logs and exponentials being inverses of one another. Here if I have log base a of a, I can just cancel those and notice all I'm left with is this x. Same thing if I have a raised to the log base a of a, those are inverses, so those cancel, and again, I'm just left with the x from the exponent. We're going to use these properties if I need to change from exponential to logarithmic form. If I need to get rid of an exponential, I'm going to take the log with that same corresponding base so that they'll cancel. Same thing over here. If I want to get rid of a log, I can use the exponential base to cancel out that log. But remember, whatever you do on one side of the equation, you have to do on the other. And then the last thing that we want to mention is that log base a of 1, no matter what your base is, if you evaluate log at 1, it will always equal 0. Okay? And then log base a of a, again, those will cancel, and you're left with your exponent here, which would just be a 1. So these properties are good to keep on hand when you're working through your homework to get used to them. These are also good things to know for your next test, okay? and they won't be given to you. All right, and then the last thing we want to note really quick is remember, we cannot evaluate log of a negative number, nor can we evaluate log of zero. So if we're dealing with some type of equation where we have log of x, or maybe we have something like log of 2x minus 1, any kind of log where we have an unknown value inside here, 
um, once we get our solution, we always have to check those inside values to make sure that they don't give us a negative and that they don't give us a zero, that they're strictly positive answers. Otherwise, we can't use them, okay? All right, so there's two cases when we start solving um, logs and exponential um, equations. Because this section's kind of long, I'm going to break it into two videos. So for this one, we're just going to focus on this number one, okay? Number one is solving logs and exponentials in which the terms have or can be written with the same base. So this is something like maybe I can write all the, all the exponential terms as base two. Right, so I have like 2 to the x equals 2 to the, I don't know, 5x minus 1, something like that. Because if I can get all the terms with the same exponential base, then remember with that property, I can then drop them. Or maybe it's a log. Maybe I can write this as log base 2 of x equals log base 2 of 3x minus 1 or something like that. Okay, if I have log base 2 on both sides, then I can drop them. So we're going to focus specifically on number 1, which is where they can be written with the same base on both sides. And then later we'll get to the ones, probably in the next video, we'll get to the ones where they can't all be written with the same base. Okay, so again, we're going to look at number 1 specifically where we can write them with the same base. So here's two examples. Okay. What we're hoping to do is write both sides with the same base so that we can drop the base and just solve what's left over. So I have an exponential problem and a log problem. Looking first at the exponential, we know that we can write 2 and 8 both as base 2 because 8 is the same thing as 2 cubed, right? So 2 cubed is what I can replace 8 with and I still have this 2x minus 10 in the exponent. Okay, on this side I have 2x. Now before I drop the 2's, I have to take care of my exponents on this side. Because I have an exponent raised to an exponent, that um, is uh, multiplication. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute this 3 to both of these terms. Okay, so I end up with 2x is equal to 2 to the 6x minus 10, right? And now that I have 2 to something is equal to 2 to something, I can go ahead and drop my 2's. So I'm going to drop my 2's, and I have x is equal to 6x minus 10. And now this is something that I can really easily just solve, right? If I solve this, I want to get all my x's on the same side, so I'm going to subtract 6x from both sides. When I subtract 6x from both sides, I end up with negative 5x is equal to negative 10. And then I can divide off my negative 5. When I divide off my negative 5, I end up with x is equal to 2. Now notice my x was in the exponent of an exponential expression. And I can have negative exponents, I can have zero exponents, I can have positive exponents. So here I don't have to worry about checking my answer. So that's my solution. Now let's go ahead and look at the um, log function. If I look at the log function over here, notice I already have one log function is equal to one log function, and they have the same log base, which means that I can go ahead and drop them. So if I drop those bases, then I will be left with x is equal to x squared. Now this is not a situation where I can divide both sides by x, okay? We can't clear x as we're solving for x. So I'm going to go ahead and move this x to the other side so that all my x's are on the same side. So I have x squared minus x. And then to solve this, I can easily solve it by just taking out a greatest common factor. So if I take out an x, I'll be left with x minus 1. And now I can set each of these equal to 0. So I get x equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. Okay. x equals 0 is already solved. x minus 1, um, when I move my 1 over by adding, I get x equals 1. Now, if you look at what x represented in these, it represented um, the inside number of a log. Inside numbers, we do have to worry about them um, becoming negative or 0. So we're going to go ahead and um, check our solution. So I'm going to write down here, we're just going to check our answers. And we're going to check them in these inside values because those are the values that we don't want to become negative or zero. So we need to check it inside of x and we need to check it inside of x squared. So my two solutions are x equals zero and x equals one. Now if I plug zero in here, I'm going to get a zero, which is not okay. I can't use that one. 
And if I can't use that one, I don't even care if I can use the second one. But I'll go ahead and say, obviously, if we square zero, it's still something that we can't use. Okay. If I plug in one, that's okay. That's not negative and it's not zero. And one squared is also not negative and not zero. So because that one worked for all inside numbers, that one is my solution. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at a few more um, examples. Uh, one thing I will say before we move on, anytime I see that I have a log function with x's inside uh, my logs, I like to put a star next to it, and that way I remember to check, uh, check my solution as we go. Okay, So let's look at some more examples. Let me go ahead and scroll down. Here again, this is a log function. Because it's a log function, we have this nice little reminder, note to self, we can't do log of a negative or log of a zero, which means we have to check our answers. So I'm going to go ahead and put a star here because we have unknowns inside our logs. Notice I already have log base 7 of something equals log base 7 of something, which means I can just drop my logs and just do 3x plus 15 equals 4. And then I can go ahead and solve this. I can solve it by moving my 15 over by subtracting which gives me 3x is equal to negative 9, and then I divide by 3. When I divide by 3, I end up with x is equal to negative 3. Now again, because I started, this is something that I need to check. I need to go ahead and check my solution. So I'm going to write out what my two inside values are. I have 3x plus 15, and I also have 4 as my inside numbers of my logs here. Okay? Now 4 is not going to change. But I'm going to go ahead and write it just so we get used to writing the inside numbers over here when we check things. And the number that I'm checking is x equals negative 3. So if I plug negative 3 into this quantity, I want to make sure it ends up non-negative and non-zero. So negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 15 is going to result in a positive answer. So that one works. And then obviously 4 doesn't have a variable, so it's not changing, so it's going to stay positive which means that x equals negative 3 is my solution. Okay? All right, let's look at another one that is um, an exponential. Okay? So with exponentials, again, same idea. We want to get um, both sides of the equation to have the same exponential base. So on this one, we are looking at 25 to the negative x squared and 625 to the negative x. Now, I can't write 625 as 25 to some power. So I'm going to have to go smaller than 25. 25 I can write as 5 squared. Um, and so I want to check, can I write 625 as 5 to some power? And I can. If you want to check it in your calculator, 625 is actually the same thing as 5 um, to the fourth power. Okay. So I have 5 to the fourth power raised to the negative x. Now again, before I can drop these fives, I need to go ahead and take care of this multiplication right here. Okay, when I have a power raised to a power, that becomes a multiplication. So I end up with, on the left-hand side, 5 to the negative 2x squared. On the right-hand side, I end up with 5 to the negative 4x. Okay, so once I get those multiplied, now I can go ahead and drop my fives and I end up with negative 2x squared is equal to negative 4x. And then again, I want to go ahead and um, get these on the same side so that I can um, solve for x. So I'm going to go ahead and move my negative 2x squared to the other side by adding. So I end up with 0 is equal to 2x squared minus 4x. Now to solve this, I can go ahead and take out a greatest common factor, which in this case would be 2x. So if I take out a 2x, I'll be left with x minus 2. And now I can set each of these equal to 0 and solve. And I'm going to move up here. I have 2x equals 0, or I have x minus 2 equals 0. When I solve the first one by dividing by 2, I get x equals 0. The second one, I get x equals 2 when I move my 2 over. So these are the two solutions I got. Now, I look over here and notice these are in the exponent. They're not inside a log, so I don't have to check my answers. We just leave it as x equals 0 or x equals 2. Okay. Let's look at another one that is a log um, equation. 
Now the thing that's different from this log equation and the log equation we did on the previous page is that this one has two terms on that left-hand side, right? So if I have two terms on that left-hand side, then I need to condense them first. Before I do anything, I want to condense these into one term because I can't drop the logs off of both sides until I have one log term is equal to one log term, okay? So notice here I have a subtraction. Subtraction condenses into division. So I'm going to write this as one log term, log base 7, and I'm going to write my inside numbers as a division. The one that's being subtracted is the one that ends up on the bottom. So this is 3x plus 2 over x. Notice when I condense it, I'm not writing log base 7 twice. I'm only writing it once, so this becomes one log term. Okay, and now that I've done that, now I can drop my log terms because I have log base 7 and log base 7 and there's just one term on each side. So once I do that, I'm left with 3x plus 2 over x is equal to 4. And then I can get my x out of the denominator by just multiplying both sides by x. If I multiply the left-hand side by x, my x's are going to cancel and I'm left with 3x plus 2. Okay, is equal to 4x. And now this is something that I can easily solve. Right? If I solve this, I'm just going to move my 3x to the other side by subtracting. So I have 2 is equal to x, which means that the solution I got is x equals 2. Now I need to check my answer because notice here, I have unknowns inside my log functions. So I need to go ahead and check my solution and I'm going to write out all my inside numbers. I have 3x plus 2, I have x, and I have 4. Now again, the 4 doesn't really matter because it's not going to be changing because there's no variable, but it's just a good habit to write all the inside numbers. So I'm checking x equals 2. If I plug 2 in here, 3 times 2 is 6 plus 2 is 8, so that ends up positive. Here, if I plug 2 in, I just get 2, which is positive, and 4 is not changing. So because it worked for all inside numbers, I can go ahead and circle this as my solution. Okay. All right, let's look at one more that we have to condense, and then we'll um, try another exponential. Okay. So on this one, I have to condense the terms that are on the left-hand side because they are a addition. Okay, that condenses into multiplication. So I'm going to write this as log base 4 and then multiply those two inside terms. So I have x minus 3 times x minus 2 equals log base 4 of x plus 1. And now that I have log base 4 of something equals log base 4 of something, I can drop my log base 4s. So I'm just going to be left with x minus 3 times x minus 2 is equal to x plus 1, okay? And now, this is something I can solve. I have to do a little bit of work. I have to foil all this out and get everything on one side, but that's something I know how to do. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Now I'm going to distribute this negative 3. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 2 gives me a positive 6, okay? So when I start combining, I get x squared minus 5x, when I combine my two x terms, plus 6 equals x plus 1. And then I need all my terms on the same side. So I'm going to subtract my x and subtract my 1, just so I can get everything on the same side so it's equal to 0. So I have x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. Now, this is something that I'm going to have to factor right, because I have an x squared. So in order to factor, I'm going to do my sum product. So my sum here is my middle coefficient, which is negative 6, and my product is my first coefficient, which is 1, times my last coefficient, which is 5, which means 1 times 5 is 5. So I need something that multiplies to 5, that combines to negative 6, which would have to be negative 5 and negative 1. And normally when we factor, right, we take these numbers, we replace the middle term, and we group. Except when our leading coefficient's a 1, we can use a shortcut. So we know this is going to factor into x minus 5 times x minus 1. 
and then I can just solve each of these quantities. So it's pretty easy to see when I solve this one, I'm going to get positive 5. When I solve this one, I'm going to get positive 1. Okay. But because I had a log problem where I have unknowns inside my log quantities, I have to check my solution before I circle or box in any answers. So I'm going to write up here. I'm going to check my answers. My inside values or quantities are x minus 3 x minus 2, and x plus 1. And the solutions that I need to check are x equals 5 and x equals 1. When I plug 5 into my first quantity here, 5 minus 3 leaves me with a 2. That's positive. 5 minus 2 leaves me with a 3. That's positive. And 5 plus 1 gives me 6, which is also positive. When I check uh, negative, or sorry, positive 1, 1 minus 3 in this first quantity gives me a negative 2. So that does not work. Okay? If that does not work, then I can't go any further than that because it has to work for all of them. So for this one, the only solution I have is x equals 5. Does that make sense? Makes sense-ish. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm going to look at two more, and then I'm going to let you all work on some. Okay? All right. So this next one is back to an exponential expression. We want to write this exponential expression with the same base on both sides. Because if we can write it with the same base on both sides, then we can drop those bases. So the base that um, 1,000 and 100 both share is 10. I can write both of those numbers as 10 to some power. And the easiest way to remember it is just count the zeros. 1,000 has three zeros. So that's the same as 10 to the third power. And then we have to write on the exponent that was already there, which is 3 minus 2x. And then 100 we can write as 10 to the, I have two zeros, so 10 squared. Okay. Now I can't drop my 10s yet. I have to first take care of this multiplication right here in the exponent. So this is going to give me 10 to the 9 minus 6x, when I distribute that out, equals 10 squared. And now I can go ahead and drop my 10s. So that leaves me with 9 minus 6x is equal to 2. And this is something that's super easy to solve, right? So I'm going to move my 9 over by subtracting. So I have negative 6x is equal to negative 7. And then the last thing I do is divide off my negative 6. So I get x is equal to 7 sixths. And I can actually just circle that in and keep that as my answer because I'm dealing with an exponential expression. I don't have to worry about um, exponents being negative, zero, positive, whatever. I can have any kind of exponent. All right, so let's look at another log one. Notice this is a natural log. We still do it the same way. We still want one log term is equal to one log term. Now, we do have one log term on each side, but this is not okay because I have this 2 out front. And I can't have a coefficient if I want to drop the logs. So remember that property that said if we have um, a coefficient out front, we can get rid of it by moving it back up into the exponent. So I'm going to take this 2 and I'm going to move it back up here into this exponent. So I have the natural log of the quantity x plus 3 squared is equal to the natural log of 12x. Okay. And now that I have two natural logs with no coefficients, I can drop the natural logs. And when I drop the natural logs, I'm going to go ahead and write this out as x plus 3 times x plus 3 so that I can go ahead and simplify it. I'm going to start distributing. x times x is x squared x times 3 is 3x. Three then I'm going to distribute my positive 3 times x is 3x. Three positive 3 times 3 is 9. And that's all equal to 12x. And then I combine my like terms. So I have x squared plus 6x plus 9 is equal to 12x. And I need to get everything on one side because I'm going to have to factor. So I'm going to subtract my 12x which gives me x squared minus 6x plus 9 equals 0. And then again, because I'm going to have to factor, I'm going to make my little sum product chart. My sum is always my middle coefficient, which is negative 6. And my product is my first coefficient times my last coefficient. So 1 times 9 
gives me a positive 9. So I need something that multiplies to give me a positive 9 that combines to give me a negative 6, which would have to be negative 3 and negative 3. Now again, because my leading coefficient is a 1, I can replace, um, I mean, I can use the shortcut and just use these factored quantities. So this is going to be x minus 3 times x minus 3 equals 0. And when I solve each of these because they're the same, I'm going to get the same answer, which is just x equals positive 3. Now, I can't just circle this in because I had a log. And with logs, I have unknowns inside my, um, my log quantities, right? So I'm going to check those. So I'm going to check my inside quantities, which I have x plus 3, and I have 12x. And the solution I'm checking is x equals 3. If I plug 3 into this first quantity, 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 times 12 is 36. So since both work, we can go ahead and circle it. I do want to mention, I know some of these you can check in your head, but it's a good idea to go ahead and write down, check, and then the two quantities that you're checking, because then it's always a reminder to check it. If you do it in your head, when you look back over your notes, you may not remember to check it when you're working through your homework. Okay? All right, so there is three, there are three practice problems for y'all to try. Um, I'm going to give you a chance to do them, and then we'll go over them here in just a minute, okay? All right, so on this first practice problem, the first thing that I see is that we have a 6 and we have a 36. And I know I can write both of those with base 6. So I'm going to write 6 to the negative 2x squared. It's already written with an exponential base of 6. The other side, I know that 36 is the same thing as 6 squared. So I'm going to write that as 6 squared, but since it's on the bottom, I need to move it up to the top. And remember, the way to move it up to the top is to change the sign of the exponent. So when I move that 6 squared up to the top, it's now going to be 6 to the negative 2. Okay. Then before I can drop my 6's, I need to go ahead and multiply those two powers together. Okay. Once I do that, then I can drop my 6's, which gives me negative 2x squared equals 2x. And then I move my 2x squared to the other side so that I can factor. Um, to factor, I just take out a greatest common factor of 2x. And then I can solve each factor, which gives me 0 and negative 1. Because my unknowns were in an exponential um, expression, I don't have to check my answers. I can just leave it like that. Okay? Let's look at number 2. For number 2, the first thing I see is that I need to condense these log terms because I need one natural log term is equal to one natural log term. So I condense them because it's an addition into multiplication. Once I've condensed it, then I have one ln term is equal to one ln term. So I can drop the ln terms and distribute that left-hand side. When I distribute that left-hand side and, and combine like terms, I should have x squared minus x minus 2. And then I'm going to move the terms from the right-hand side over so that I get everything on one side so that I can factor. That leaves me with x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. And then this is something I can factor using some product. I need something that combines to negative 2 and that multiplies to negative 8, which would be negative 4 and 2. And with my leading coefficient here being a 1, I can use my shortcut that these, these numbers I found in my chart are the numbers in my factored quantities. So x minus 4 is a factor, x plus 2 is a factor. When I solve those, I get positive 4 and negative 2. And then because these unknowns are inside of log terms, I have to check my answer. So I'm checking my um, three inside values. When I check positive 4, all three check out. When I check negative 2, um, not so much. So my only solution is x equals 4. Okay. Let's look at the last one. All right, for the last one, same thing. I notice my unknowns are inside log terms. So I go ahead and put my star out here so I remember to check my answer. Because I have terms that are added or subtracted together, first step is condensing. Always, always, always get one log term is equal to one log term. When I condense, 
because this is an addition, I can condense it into multiplication. So I can write this as log base 2 of x minus 5 times x plus 3. And then now that I have one log base 2 term is equal to one log base 2 term, I can drop my log base 2 and uh, go ahead and distribute out the left-hand side. And then I'm going to move my terms from the right over to the left. And when I combine all my like terms, I get x squared minus 16 equals 0. Now there's two ways you can solve from here. You can factor it like a difference of squares like I did, or you can move the 16 over and do plus or minus the square root. Okay? Either way is fine with me. And regardless of which method you choose, you should get a negative 4 or a positive 4. When I check those, notice neither one of them satisfies all three inside numbers. So if neither one of them satisfy that, that means I have no solution. Okay. All right, so these are all the problems that can be written with the same log base on both sides or the same exponential base on both sides. So that's the end of the first part of section 4.4. So you should now be able to complete the 4.4a assignment. Okay. We're going to go to the next video um, uh, to discuss the second part, and then you'll be able to do the second part of your homework.